drivetrains. Two wheel type drivetrain. So this is a rookie drivetrain that's considered to be inferior and it's usable at a low comp competitive level. So this is an introductory drivetrain type for many rookies and it's promoted in official guides used by FIRST or published by FIRST. Uh, so it also often has a direct driven traction, wheels with unpowered omni wheels. And so the type of drivetrain has poor turning because the center of turning is in the back of the robot between the two powered wheels. And in comparison to other drivetrains, it has poor acceleration due to only using two motors. Four-wheel drivetrain is, is a the more common form of the drivetrain uses the same wheel, same wheel layout, so two traction in the back and two omni in the front, but with a noticeable difference. In this, all four wheels are powered. And so it suggested that the shape of this drivetrain is close to a square. Otherwise, ones will be encountering problems with turning. And weight distribution is also a large factor that should be considered. So the more weight in the back, the better. A six wheel drivetrain is a more common competitive drivetrain in FTC for multiple reasons. It has a fantastic traction, great turning, and by having six wheels, the drivetrain has more contact with the ground, helping with stability and traction. So there's two main types of six wheel drivetrains. There's a drop center, and then there's a corner omni. In a drop center, 6WD, or you can say six wheel drive if you choose to, uh, it has the center wheel mounted slightly below the other two so that it's touching the ground. And so this drop should be anywhere from more than 16th of an inch up to a fourth of an inch. And so most things would use an eighth of an inch. And six wheel drive with corner omni wheels does not have a center drop. It attempts to solve the issue of turning by replacing the corner traction wheels with omni wheels, allowing the drive chain to achieve better turning. Eight wheel drive. Uh, a wheel drive train are more common than six or less common than six wheel drive train and it combines elements found in four wheels and six wheel drive trains so six wheel drive train will have a drop center wheel so that the robot turns on four wheels instead of six and it reduces friction and increases turning mobility and the eight, eight wheel drive the center four wheels are dropped and not two and so this means when turning only the four, middle four wheels are touching the ground Thus, the eight-wheel drivetrain has slightly more stability while turning the six-wheel drive, whereas six-wheel drives can turn more quickly. Furthermore, since the eight-wheel drive has wheels in the same place as a four-wheel drive, it has the stability of a four-wheel drive. Tread drive. So tread is usually using tank treads or wide belts to power movement, much like a real-life tank. But in FTC, it's not a competitive drivetrain for many reasons because it's mainly complicated and there's many points of failures. And they're very prone to defense and a slight hit from another robot with wood misaligned with treads. Mechanum drivetrain is a drivetrain consisting of four mechanum wheels, which are powered independently by one motor. And so the configuration angles the velocity of the, each wheel allowing the robot to strafe, so like move side to side. And the primary advantage to mechanum wheel, mechanum drivetrains is the uh, maneuverability because the robot can strafe instead of having to turn and then drive. And so the rollers on mechanum wheels form a 45 degree angle with the wheels axis of rotation, which means that the mechanum drive trains can't strafe as fast as they can drive forward. It's important to note that in order to maximize the efficiency and stability of mechanum drives, when viewed from above, the rollers of each wheel should point towards the center of the robot forming an X shape rather than a rhombus. And the primary reason is that it'll allow the robot or the drivetrain to turn significantly faster than it would otherwise be able to. X-Drive. Uh, X-Drive is a holonomic omni wheel based drivetrain uh, and it has four omni wheels in the corner of the robot at a 45 degree angle. And so a big difference between X-Drive and Mechanum is the strafing speed. Um, omni wheels are offset so this packaging of an X-Drive is more difficult than other types of holonomic drives like Mechanum or H-Drive. And also because of the strange packaging, it is relatively difficult to cleanly transfer power from motors to wheels. So most of the time, x drives are just direct driven, which has a bad lifespan on the motor gearbox. H-Drive, also known as U-Drive, uh, is a holonomic drivetrain used on all Omni wheels, or uses all Omni wheels. And so H-Drive relies on the set of strafer wheels that are perpendicular to the forward-backward wheels to achieve strafing. H drive is similar to the fusion to the fusion 
to the fusion of a tank drivetrain while retaining the maneuverability and the strength of a autonomic drivetrain. An H drive is slightly reduced acceleration compared to a mechanism drive. Swerve is a typical special type of drivetrain used in FTC and FRC, more commonly in FRC though, and it allows each individual wheel to turn independently from the other wheels, giving it unparalleled maneuverability on the field. And so the main advantage of the swerve drive is a great increase in maneuverability. And the trade-offs that are swerves are the trade-offs are that swerves more complicated to build and it consumes much more resources. But some swarm some forms of swerve have less power in pushing robots, but the maneuverability also makes up for it. Linear motion. Uh, linear motion is an important component of a successful robot. So uh, teams are required to reach into an area that a drive train cannot, cannot to pick up and deposit game elements. So back in 2017-2018 season, relic recovery, teams had to extend an arm to grab a relic that was in the corner of the field. And since it was nearly impossible to drive into, People would use linear slides to extend into the space to pick up the relic. Extrusion slides are made from stacks of extrusions that extend by sliding along each other. So there's two ways you can do this, bushings or V-wheels. Bushing slides connect two slides with two self-lubricating plastic pieces that slide smoothly along the slots in the extrusion. V-wheel slides have V-shaped groove bearings on both sides of the extrusion that bite into grooves on the extrusion, allowing the stages to slide smoothly. So most teams would use the Rev Robotics 15mm Linear Motion Kit, After Robotics X-Rail Slide Kit, or the Go Go, the Go Rails. Drawer Slides. So teams use drawer slides for linear motion, often stacking them using 3D printed spacers to achieve plenty of extension. And so these slides are available from many different vendors, and they come in many different varieties. So steel drawer slides are the most common but they can be hard to mount as, because they aren't made to be stacked. And aluminum drawer slides such as Misumi slides or the Hefeel slides are generally the best option for teams. Lead screws. A lead screw is used a threaded rod to create high torque linear motion. Their primary advantage is being able to handle much higher loads than unmodified kit options. And another key, uh, use of, for lead screws is to change the to the change of the angle of the arm platform, but the, it, this is more common in FRC. Uh, however, it does come at a cost, and the cost is uh, lead screws are very, very slow. Rack and pinion. Rack and pinion refers to the circular gear. Uh, in this case, a pinion gear attached to a shaft and meshed to a rack, which is a tooth linear gear. When the pinion gear is driven, it will drive the pinion gear upwards or downwards depending on how the rack and pinion is mounted. And generally, this is a good light use option for FTC teams in terms of linear extension. Rigging refers to the way that the string belt or chain is set up to extend or retract a linear extension. This is important, but it's also a time consuming requirement. Continuous rigging is generally recommended. So it entails rigging one long extension string originating from the motor powered spool to the top of the base stage, then to the bottom of the first stage, then to the top of the first stage, then to the bottom of the second stage, etc. A retraction string originating from a second spool on the same axis as the extension spool is then anchored to the top. And so when the motor rotates in one direction, the extension spool reels in the extension string so it becomes shorter. Cascade rigging. Cascade rigging is more complicated but it's similar in the way that extension string originates from the spool is rigged to the top of the base and running down to the bottom of the first stage. But instead of being rigged to the top, the extension string is anchored to the bottom of the first stage. So the second extension string anchored to the top of the base is rigged to the top of the first stage. And it keeps on going until all the stages have been rigged. Continuous retraction utilizes the same retraction as continuous rigging, but there's one big difference. So if the variable x is the number of stages in the system, that diameter of the extension spool must be x times smaller than the retraction spool. Elastic retraction. So instead of retracting using a retraction spool, one common way to retra retract is attaching a piece of elastic. So a surgical tubing, or you can use rubber bands, and you attach it to the last stage. It applies a force on the stage that is counteracted by the motor when extending. 
However, when retracting the motor wheels the last slide back in. Cascade retraction entails simply rigging another set of cascades that can retract. The system when engaged in is very space efficient, but it requires way more strain. In belt-driven slides, so one increasingly popular alternative to traditional stringing can be belt-driven. And so this can be done continuously or uh, using cascade. And these don't have to be, these ever don't have to be tensioned, but there are size restrictions.